Can I, okay, so, um, so I think... Please, can I just say... One very quickly. I will take 10 seconds. Good moment. I moved here in 1997. Oh, that's your 10 seconds. And the first scheme for the sorting out of Heron Road was out. We went to the council to see what was happening in Heron Road area before we moved in. And the first scheme was going on then. That disappeared under the bin. Secondly, there was another one that came through about 12 years later. This seems a little bit the longer than 10 seconds. And a few more seconds. I've more been set. at Heron Road 50 yeah. bloody years now, yeah. and it's nothing's got any better. Okay. No matter what council is in or anything, so I'd be grateful if you'd just let me finish off what I was saying. There's another set, and then about five years ago, another complete new scheme, mm -hmm. which was then kicked to one side because of the bloody golf club. Let's get the roads right, the infrastructure right, and then start thinking about golf clubs. That's what we need. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're can more I, than welcome. Can I just say as well, I'm sorry about this, but I have to say, this gentleman talking about speed bumps, but I'm sorry, I'd rather have speed bumps on our roads than dead children. They do slow traffic down. Okay. I'd like to remove them and ask, is there any other plans for traffic farming? I don't want to remove them, what better plans for traffic farming? Okay. And so, just to finish off on her road if we may. So in terms of her road, I think what I heard Stuart agree to would be that we would do some uh, look at options and have those evaluated and impact assessed and then it's an argument about resources one place or to the So we agreed that. What I'd like you to do with some pace if that's possible, David, is there were other points that were raised around speed bumps and uh, other elements around the yeah. Uh, around the constituency. Could you, could you make sure you cover those off with a bit of pace, please? Yeah. Parking on footways. Parking on footways will be causing obstruction is illegal. Um, the police are unfortunately, yet again, the only people that can enforce that. Uh, and I don't mind where people park, but don't obstruct footways. As long as it's safe and legal, fine. There are more cars now than there were many years ago. But as responsible drivers, we should all be parking responsibly and legally. Um, uh, 20 mile an hour West Kirby. Um, the speed uh, surveys that we've done through the main uh, parts of West Kirby, uh, the, the, the mean speeds are higher than the 24 mile an hour, a good <coughs> than the 24 mile an hour. And without other physical measures to reduce those down for self compliance, um, then it doesn't meet the, uh, the guidance set out by the Department of Transport for putting that in. Um, and they were the only notes that I made before of the points being raised. Okay, James, you were, I know because you work with the group where we're looking to, to do some of these, and I know you probably often think, you know, you just talk and don't decide anything or ignore everyone. <laughs> um, what I probably didn't make clear in, in the presentation was that. Um, the schemes that were taken forward were effectively a short list of, of, of issues um, and we started with a very long list and continue to have a long list of um, things that were um, open for discussion like Heron Road, like the 20 mile per hour zone in West Kirby um, that we've revisited time and time again as a panel to think about actually are the, are the different ways of looking at this problem so it was just really to, um, to reassure that it's not, it, it's not not being discussed in, in those types of forums, Dave comes along to that. We have those, we have those discussions. But as you heard here, it's it's the challenge is, is financial and also what is the what is the right way to address these issues. I just just wants to reassure that it's, it is part of those discussions. Okay, and uh, Matthew. Twenty seconds, honestly. Um, I wanted to be beginning. Part, yes, now I want to be part of Dave's uh, takeaway actions. I think it's good that there'll be actions following this. Um, I know you point you about options, but can we also therefore include, I heard about 20 mile per hour zones and the word you used was guidance. For me, guidance is there as like a, as a guide and you're happy to ignore it if you can. So are there ways around some of this stuff and can we take away something on the, what is the route to a work around on the 20 mile per hour zone? And it is a legislation change. Fine, let's ask one of some of our MPs to support a legislation change, but can we have a route to actually doing that? And I'd love to, I'd love to know what a, a route map for that is. Okay. Can I ask the committee whether we are 
contemplate, so I think there's at least three things that come out of that. There's the looking at, I think we're meant to call them safety cameras, okay? Uh, looking at um, safety cameras across the emerging partnership, looking at some options around, particularly around Heron Road, which this gentleman's been uh, in for 50 years, uh, and, um, and also that, that final point about looking to see what's the difference between guidance and uh, what flexibility that allows us around 20 mile an hour zones. And if David, if Stuart's happy for David to go away and look at those, would we be content with that as an approach? Yeah, oh, and the no entry sign, specifically the no entry sign. No entry sign. Um, we, on, that, on that bit, uh, traffic managers have had a look at it. We've got no evidence of people uh, going into that in the wrong way in terms of casualties. Uh, we've repainted the road where it says no entry. Dave, Dave, I respect your professionalism and I always think professional, professionals' expertise should be uh, should be valued, uh, probably above most things. But I think local residents who are there all the time, because we only come in and check. Yeah. So local residents are all the time and we'll see that. It strikes me, if we've got some money in these sort of local uh, local areas, is there anything to stop us putting a signpost with no entry? Technically, no. Yeah. But if the constituency committee have the funding to do it, then, then we can um, prioritise that as a scheme and we can have a look at doing that. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. David? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, we've spent 20 minutes on talking about the problems on Heron Road. I'd just like to make the point that one of the reasons why the fire station was approved at Greasby was on the grounds that going down Heron Road would allow fire engines to get to West Kirby and Hoy Lake faster than they could get there using a different route from Upton. I'm just making the point. That is why I spent five months of my life fighting against that planning application because I think relying on Heron Road as the route for fire engines to get to Hoy Lake and West Kirby as the reason for moving it from where it currently is in Upton is farcical. Well, um, luckily I wasn't on the uh, planning committee, so didn't necessarily have to say. But as a councillor of West Kirby, I'm very pleased that fire engines will reach West Kirby um, uh, quicker than they would have done if they stayed up to. So we all have our views around this particular matter. So, uh, okay, I think we've moved on in terms of those who've got some clear action. And I'm sure, I'm sure that residents will continue to hold this committee uh, to account for doing, even listening as a start, I have to say. Starting off by saying you're very good at listening. Uh, that's, that's a start, because um, um, often we're told that we don't listen. <laughs> um, so actually, good at listening is a good start. I think you will hold us to account in terms of those actions we've asked uh, David to go away about, and we can bring back, and Jane will make sure it comes back on the agenda when we discuss. Is that okay? All right. So thank you very much for those. Have you got a view about the uh, about the fire in fire station? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. It's, um, it's only a really tiny example, but the only reason that Jane and I managed to get the markings renewed at the end of Helen Road were due to the discussion here, because there's acres and acres of markings that we're going to done across the borough. So although it's although it's a token gesture, it's on the start. That only happened because of the debates you had here. We took that back and. And said to colleagues, well, we said, do it, really. <laughs> we don't care about the. We've got a, we, apparently, we have a rule where if it's, if it's um, 40% or more, we don't renew them. Simply, it's simply a budget matter. So, that one, we found a way of doing it to start. Well, God bless you, Gavin. Well, it was a shame, more than you know. Yeah. So, no, but I think it's an indication of that not only do we listen, we try and act and do as yeah. much as we can given the, given the constraints. So, Right, I think that was that was good, and apparently we took more than the 15 minutes. Thank you for letting me know, David. Um, so if we could move on then to cover um, Dong Energy, and you've been doing a huge amount on this, Jane, haven't you? Um, yeah, I'll keep my um, business items um, short, given I know there's lots of questions as well from the audience later on. And um, this next item um, was just to really outline um, an income um, generation um, source that, that has become available recently um, around the Berber Bank extension. So John have made available um, quite a substantial amount in terms of community grants um, for a programme which uh, extends across 
um, a good part of Wirral, uh, North Wales, uh, Liverpool and Sefton. Um, and that's for uh, projects which are kind of in, uh, kind of in the estuary area. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to sit on the advisory panel um, for that grant programme. And um, so I see the, um, the real um, diversity of projects that uh, comes through and the applications that are made. Uh, and I'm really pleased to say that um, we're all, um, I've actually, in terms of the, the rounds of funding that have, that have happened to date, um, I've, got some, I've got a figure here. Um, so 450,000 has been awarded to date, so that's over kind of four rounds of funding. Um, and Wirral has actually received over 50% of that. Um, I like to think that's because I'm their champion in Wirral projects, but it is about the quality of the projects as well. Uh, a number of those um, are Wirral West projects, and so there's examples of things that, are, that have happened here that wouldn't otherwise, but there's lots of other projects in, in wider Wirral as well. So you may have seen the Mermaids in New Brighton. They were funded by um, Dong Energy through this programme. A really interesting project that um, I'm really excited about is the building of a Viking replica ship, which is funded by Dong, which is linked to a group that's very active in, in Wirral West around sort of heritage and the Viking heritage, which you know um, is, is very key to this ward as well. So um, it's a real opportunity. What I'd like to do at a future meeting is bring Dong um, and Grantscape, who's the, the uh, organisation that administers the fund, along to this meeting to share their views on how that's going um, because it's a, you know, it's, a, it's a really important grant programme for them because it's about their um, corporate social responsibility. So if the committee will be open to that, I think that would be a really good opportunity. Yeah, I think, uh, speaking on behalf of us all, I think we would be very keen to to hear from Dong and to see what they've done and, yeah. and how they've exercised their corporate responsibility. So that'd be super. And I know it's a bit of false modesty from you, Jane, but really, you know, it is the work you do on that. Um, on that body, including advising groups about how to apply, uh, helps the high level of success we've had. So, shouldn't be shouldn't be overly modest about the big impact you have on that. So, I'm sure all the groups that are benefiting from that, thank you very much. Um, anything anybody else wants to add around Dong? No, no. Okay. In that case, um, you're going to present your report, Jane. And are you going to pick up? The elements of where we're supported the 2020 pledges are they picked out in here as well so just so as we can demonstrate that we are trying to do our best uh, not specifically um but i think in terms of the work that the constituency committee funds and the work of um helen and I and the constituency team i think we um we we do address a lot of the pledges in, in different ways so i'll, I'll try and touch on that as we go um as I say, I'll keep, I'll keep this quite brief. Um, this is my regular uh, report to the, to the committee uh, in terms of uh, progress of, of the work Helen and I do outside the committee meetings, um, utilising the constituency committee's budget. <laughs> um, uh, a couple of key recommendations I wanted to make sure we noted around the road safety budget because that is, that is quite an important budget that needs spending by the end of the financial year. Um, and in a couple of discussions that's been really helpful. Um, and it may be that some of those schemes that we saw in the presentation may be um, um, altered or tweaked or shaped around the discussion say so that's really good. Um, there's another recommendation linked to um, a pot of money that the committee's had for a couple of years to tackle antisocial behaviour um, and this was allocated on the basis of the majority of that being spent in Woodchurch given the um, issues of um, antisocial behaviour um, and the rest in the wider constituency. Um, so specifically asking the committee, um, we have got an antisocial behaviour panel we haven't been able to meet recently, um, but to authorise some of that money for uh, activities around uh, mischief night and bonfire night, because that's when we see some uh, peak issues around antisocial behaviour, as you know. Okay, just, just so as we don't have to go back. Is that agreed? I think it's about one and a half thousand to be spent in, in the church to work in those particular areas. Yep, yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, there's a budget summary in the report, at page 17, uh, which I won't go into in detail because um, um, that's covered regularly. One uh, initiative that I would like to talk about is something called Love Where You Live, um, and this is very much linked to the World 2020 Pledge. I um, include Herod Mount. <laughs> around um, attractive local environments. Um, Council Brightmore is the portfolio holder, um, very much behind this, this initiative. Um, and what we've done is work with the Waste and Recycling environmental team to try and think about how we can best support the fantastic groups who um, do list picks and cleanups in the area on a voluntary basis and kind of just get that out there. Okay. <laughs> uh, only, only briefly, because like you, I think this is a, 
great initiative by Phil. And I, I just wonder whether you wanted to give a further plug, Phil, for the work, for the work of, the, of the initiative. More than happy to. Um, really, Jane's covered it its entirety, but it's about facilitating. Uh, local groups do and continue to do good work that they do in front of the borough. It's about trying to keep the borough as beautiful as it currently is and more beautiful into the future. It's chiefly funded, this scheme and a number of other schemes, by the money that comes in through the fixed penalty notices, so the littering fines, the dog farming fines. And I think that's an important point of this. It's recycling that money and making sure it's always, always put to good use. That's about it. Okay. Excellent. So, and again, if anyone's a member of a community group, I think the key thing is we've got the kit and we'll give the support. So, you know, it's the classic, you know, give a person a fish or teach them to fish type thing, isn't it? So, if, there's, uh, if there are any community groups or you're aware of any community groups that want to get involved, then if you let uh, Jane know or whatever, then we can facilitate that and we can do the, the sure. clear-ups. Sorry, Phil, yeah. Just, just for clarity as well, whilst there will we'll be local hubs established in the community areas where a lot of equipment, equipment will be placed, well, if groups can demonstrate that they're going to use them often, we as council will not have to gift those, those facilities and invite them away from groups. Okay. And Pam has been serving a lot of information about this recently because we've got a launch week coming up um, in October um, around the availability of this kit. So there'll be clean ups every day across Wirral um, and a celebration event on Friday the 20th um, of October at Birkenhead Town Hall, I think between 1 and 3. Pam's nodding, so that's not right. Um, and anyone who wants to celebrate the work of um, Litter Pick volunteers or get involved with a group that you, you know, um, please do come along to that. Um, everyone's more than welcome. Um, and anyone who is on our mailing list should be getting information about that, so that's good. Um, in terms of, um, that's the substantive written report. Uh, we've also done some slides around uh, uh, ward updates to give a flavour of what's been going on in, the, um, in each ward. Um, I won't get up and do that, I'll just ask Helen to, to run through. Um, this is just to give people an idea of some of the things I say which happen in between meetings. Um, the committee has funded a, an awful lot of projects um, in, in recent years, small projects, and we like to give a flavour really of what people have done with that money. So, uh, example here, every cricket club um, have installed a defibrillator. I can never say defibrillator. Is that just in case I decide to go and play? Possibly. Possibly. Um, and um, a really welcome addition in terms of reassurance, in terms of those being available everywhere. I'm a real, I'm a real advocate for uh, different prices. That's a great little project. Thanks, Helen. Um, we um, recently had a, a, a small grant opportunity which we call Big Difference, which was about environmental improvements using some of the committee's um, funding. Um, and without my glasses on, I can't read from here, so I'm going to have to find my slides. Um, I'll run through um, the organisation. It's like that a <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so Greasby Allotment Holders uh, were awarded funding, Greasby Community Association, Green and Bloom in Greasby, um, uh, Irby First and Pennsylvania Immunity Society. They've got some funding to do various things, including um, uh, planting projects. Thanks, Helen. Um, I can circulate the detail to the members of the committee put this presentation online as well. So. I um, uh, just wanted to outline this one, um, which Councillor Clements will be aware of. Um, a long-standing issue, and this is the type of thing that we don't always, um, is not always reflected in committee reports in terms of the day-to-day -day work of our team. Um, there's been issues with um, Pump Lane Pond in Greasby, leaking, causing real issues. It's been going on for a long time in terms of exploring why that's happened, why that's happening. Helen's kind of coordinated that over well, since October 2015, but we're now really pleased to be able to say that work is, is going to commence to actually fix that. Now, Pump Lane Pond is a very loved um, part, um, place in Greasby that a lot of people feel very strongly about wanting to maintain and look after. Um, and the committees, the, the, the funding from the committee is actually supporting that. And it's making, I think it's made a real difference to a very loved asset in the community. I hope I'm right in saying that, so I just wanted to say good news Okay, and Wendy, do you want to Yeah. Mention? Well, I'd just like to thank um, Jane and particularly Helen for their work on that. Um, the, the path that was getting blocked is actually a route that a lot of people used to walk into the village as well, so it's a really key part of our community, so thank you. Cool. Cool. We've got a couple of 
different photos. Oh, gosh. We're going to go and fix it on. Um, one thing, um, I haven't got on the presentation, but which um, I was made aware of today in terms of Irby particularly, is that there is a normal <coughs> meeting of New Neighbourhood Watch Group um, next Wednesday, um, 12 of October, was it Thursday? At 7 p.m. Um, so anyone who lives in Irby, I don't know if that's as well. I just wanted to make sure I noted that in the meeting in case there were people interested because they would watch fantastic uh, initiative to get involved in. Okay, moving on to Floyd Lake. Um, um, the, the committee has regularly funded um, the Festival of Firsts, which is a, a great event um, built the, in every well, year. the very first. Funder. I think amongst the, the first funders, yeah, it's grown. It's grown a lot yeah. since. Um, I seem to remember in Hoylake and Grove Grove Road, you know, um, the community hall there. That was the first one when they came. We did our, you know, the participatory budgeting. Oh, okay. And they came along and, and bid for the uh, bid for the funding. Yeah. That was the first the first funding thing that they got. Yeah, and as I say, they've gone from strength to strength. So this year. They're, they're, they're placing an increasing focus on community participation, which is fantastic in terms of linking to some of our World 20, 20 pledges around um, volunteering, etc. That's, that's brilliant. Well done. Um, um, and a couple of photographs there of some people enjoying the, the um, festival affair. So a lot happens in between the annual festival, and as I say, they're doing some great work with local groups to make sure that they're involved. Um, another really good project, um, and Jackie Hall, who's our community rep for Hoylake and Mills, is at another event tonight with UTS, who are setting up a community hub. They've had some funding to do um, fitness classes with people with a range of issues, um, including people um, with cancer and people with um, mental health issues, to really um, focus on people's well-being. So that's been a really good project. More photographs. And say, I'll put this on the website if anyone's interested. Always get in touch and ask about our projects. Um, the small grants that we've awarded through the Environmental Grant Programme um, of um, Holy Lake JFC, Holy Lake Football Club, uh, Friends of Ashton Park, which um, sits in West Kirby and Holy Lake and Mills Ward, um, the Boating Lake, there's a group come together to, to uh, work with existing stakeholders to try and improve the Boating Lake, that's great. Friends of Holy Lake and Mills in Bloom, lots of stuff around flower beds, etc. Um, the Love Where You Live group, which is now the High Tidies in West Kirby, they've had some money, um, and the Bowling Club. So you can see a lot of these groups have been funded in previous years, but they it's a re it's really great for them to be able to have access to those small grants. I'm going to pick it quicker. Um, I've mentioned about the Boating Lake in Hoy Lake. Um, United Utilities did some work in New Brighton um, a couple of years ago, I think now, um, on, as part of their kind of giving something back type um, uh, work. So we're going to meet United Utilities at the Boston Lake and see if they can do it there, which would be fantastic to improve it and, and clean up and stuff. Um, I won't keep running through these grants, I'll just make sure they're circulated, but you can see there there's um, people have, have applied and, and been awarded grants. Um, really, really fantastic. I really did want to talk about this. Um, we've talked about the Great Rural Door Knock um, previously in this committee, um, and this is something that's coming up come out of the Aging Well World 2020 Pledge and it's about community community and partners working together um, to um, really tackle social, social isolation and loneliness in communities. And the most recent one was in Pensby, we were very pleased to have it in Pensby um, and Helen worked with um, local community assets including this church here um, to um, be a base for partners, police, fire and rescue service, council range of other partners to go knock on people's doors and see what we could do to link people into services. And so you can see there, the Emmanuel Church here and Pensby Library, um, we used as a base over three days and a big thank you to people who got involved. Can I ask, can I ask yes. a question on that? Because again, um, yeah, okay, you're going to cover it off, but so Conscious of the input measures, so there's been a lot of work going on, and I know that I've been done with local councillors and, and so on, everyone being involved, and we made a lot of those connections. Is the do we have any follow-on measures? So I think social social isolation is a bigger issue than 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 people realise, and I know the work you've done would suggest that too. So. Is there anything, is there any follow on measure to say it has connected those people, connect, might have connected them to services, but is there any, any broader improvement in the quality of people's lives? Yeah. Well, 
what happens after the door knock, and it's happened in a few areas now, is that um, all of the feedback we get from speaking to people um, is, is then discussed. And if there's new groups or new initiatives or new activities we think need to be in place, we take actions forward to try and put that in place. So um, after the Woodchurch Home, we set up a reading group in Woodchurch Library. So it's, it's quite small things that actually potentially make a big difference. Um, you can see that the numbers, um, you know, 273 people spoken to over those three days and nearly 100 referrals to partner organisations, that's quite significant. In terms of, you know, we, we talk about limited resources, but there is a lot out there for people to access um, if, if, they, if they need to. Um, so things like having a home safety check from the fire and rescue service is such a valuable thing that could, you know, um, save someone's life and also make sure that they're, you know, tied into other things like... Um, um, supported, you know, supported uh, assistive technology to, in in the home stuff like that. So really, really positive. And fortunately, um, we're making some um, funding available from the constituency budget. Um, each each ward has what we call the ward underspend, which is left over from grant programmes. Um, and um, we're going to um, make available funding um, in Pensby the ward from tomorrow. Um, to so that, that people can bid in. So we hope that some of the people involved in the door knock will recognise opportunities there, but there might also be things that people want to do. So some real opportunities so um, it's, it's a great initiative. And I know Mike, you wanted to say something like that. Yes, Mike. You asked, Chair, thank you. You asked about the, the door knock, which is a fantastic three days here in, in this local area. But as a result of that, Pensby Library is now, um, I think, called a place of welcome where people can come along. It's aimed at the socially isolated in this area particularly, but every other ward in the borough can do this as well. So Pensby Library is now a designated place of welcome where anyone can come in, pop in, particularly on a Monday and a Thursday, and have tea, coffee, biscuits, toast. So that's one of the, one of the knock-on effects of the, um, the door knock that we did here, which was very, very successful. No, I, I, I think it's great, and you know, um, I think the work you've done with Pensby Library has been fantastic. Actually, Mike, you know, Mike, and I'm just glad we were able to keep it open for you. Uh, so, okay, yeah. next one. Uh, Is that the spice overcoat, Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> um, moving on to Upton Upton Ward. Um, again, sorry, people won't be able to read that. It's very um, small in terms of the size of the screen there. An example of a project with um, a local social enterprise uh, working within schools. Um, a really lovely project working with um, children between 7 and 11 struggling with kind of low self-esteem, anxiety type issues um, and that's gone really well um, and they're hoping to roll out as a worldwide project. I don't know if you would mind showing the slides of some children there being mindful. <laughs> um, Be mindful. Do you want to say something about it or just... I'm, I'm happy to continue let Jane put your report. Uh, again, I won't, I won't run through in detail given um, we're running out of time, but if we go on to the next slide, Helen. Um, in terms of what some of the other work that goes on in Upton, um, Helen regularly attends um, something that's been long established called the Woodchurch Community Safety Group, um, which um, came out of a Woodchurch, the Woodchurch Partnership. Dave knows more about it than me, so he's looking at me. Um, what I, uh, in terms of the issues that are discussed at that group, it's more very broad, general residence issues as well as community safety issues. So Helen supports that group, and you know a lot of a lot of improvements, minor improvements have come out of that group, which I think is is fantastic. Um, the Carbridge Centre in Woodchurch, which is quite recently asset transferred, um, is um, gaining in, in activities, isn't it, Dave? Lots, lots and lots of stuff going on there, which has been brilliant. And Helen's really supporting Kerry to make sure that building's used. So that's great. Um, and there is a, a fragrance advert for something going on at the Carbridge there, a Halloween party. So, which is great because it's a great. That's a great asset. <coughs> this year, more, so we're doing a lot to support promoting that. Um, there's the West Kirby project again. I won't run through that. Um, and a couple of things that have happened with Kirby. I think significantly there, the High Tide Ideas Group, which I mentioned earlier, which have been they've been very involved in the Love Where You Live initiative. Uh, members of the group came to a, a briefing meeting with councillors and gave their views as to how we should be supporting volunteers to do this great work. Um, and it's just been, it's, it's brilliant. It's going from strength to strength. Um, other bits of support that we've put in place, there's the second West Kirby Cubs enjoying their um, shelter funded by the constituency committee. 
Um, always like to say small things that make a big difference in terms of people's enjoyment of life, people's activities, and actually getting out there and being part of, part of the community. Um, I think that's the last slide. Um, so you can see there, whistle stop tour of all the um, exciting things that, um, that we get in involved in. Um, and if ever, anyone is ever interested in what we do, get in touch with Helen. Um, and obviously, if you have any questions about what we've been up to recently. Okay. Well, on behalf of us all, I think certainly Helen and Jane, um, I'd like to thank you for the effort. This, nothing happens by accident, and you are kind of glue or the cement that keeps the wall in place, if you know what I mean. So I think you are absolutely critical to supporting those groups and knowing that they're valued and supported and listened to and, and, and some of their frustrations are taken care of and where we can um, supply that. Not huge amounts of funding, but some of that that really makes a, a big difference. So, very grateful for the work that uh, you and Helen do. So, so thank you very much for that. And I, I was counting the number of places you played. So. <laughs> so, well done. Um, okay, are there any questions that anyone might have uh, across Jane's report? I'll be can accept that. With all. Thanks. The next one, I think, is the community reps update. And we have a very um, happy task, I think, which is to come up, to co opt Roy Sheriff as the community rep for up to the remainder of the municipal year. And we've heard from, from Roy already. So he's clearly, he's, no, you can make the walk of shame um, to the table if you like, or you can just be here next time. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, just quickly on this, because I understand that um, correct in thinking that Roy doesn't actually live in... No, but it's been very involved. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, yeah. So I just want to make this yeah. point, and because uh, we've discussed this, and I'm, I'm really grateful to Roy for the work he's done in the ward. I know that he himself doesn't actually live in Upton, but given the work he has done and his willingness to take on this role, he's been welcomed by the Upton councillors to do it. Um, but with, with a very clear view that if other people want to get involved from Opton, this is not in any way to exclude anyone. So if you're keen and you think that the work that Roy will be doing and has already done is, is a positive for the community and you'd like to play your own role, please contact any of the councillors or Jane because we would love for, you, for, for local residents within Upton as well to be performing that. Thank okay. you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and you're very welcome, Roy. So, uh, yes, look forward to working with you. Uh, do you want to take us through the other community? I think I think they've been they've been circulated in the papers, or do you want to update us? Um, uh, we've had, um, I say, Jackie is not here this evening, but she has sent um, she sent an update, which I'm happy to read if, if the committee. Can we okay. circulate, maybe? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I'll draw out the, the, the key points. Yeah. Um, Jackie just wanted to mention that. Um, there is um, a new group being set up around Friends of West Kirby and Holy Lake Beach um, and um, an issue that I'm aware of around the telephone box. Yeah. Um, I think a number of people may know about that. Um, um, yeah, every, it, it's like everything, it's just that, you know, uh, success has a thousand fathers, but failure uh, is on its own, for want of a better expression. So I'm really pleased that how many people claim credit for keeping this particular uh, phone box open. Um, I don't really mind who's claiming the credit for it. The key thing was it was kept open. It's a, and I see that the OMD are going out on another world tour. So that's a, that's quite interesting, isn't it? So uh, well done to everyone involved. Um, there were a couple of other things that I mentioned by Jackie. I don't. I think, as I say, I can circulate that. Um, but she does mention the um, the sand yachting European Championships taking place last week in Hoy Lake, which is. I think fantastic but it's not advertisers it's not considered a spectator sport again very interesting but um but it, that brought in lots of competitors from over the world so that's um that's great that Hoylick was um in the spotlight like that so i think yeah she did yeah okay yeah. and and it, like everything jackie does a does a huge amount um and you know Hoylick is becoming a very vibrant and busy village again and that's uh, testament to the work that Jackie and people like her and the people she coordinates uh, does. Uh, you know, I suppose a bit of an interest because my mum visits the group that, that she runs and invariably it does you know, make a real difference to her life. So Jackie is, uh, does amazing stuff. 
Okay. Um, Roy, would it be unfair to, if you want to, have you been, have you had an update prepared that you're desperate to go? Um, we um, met with residents of Arnbach, and, and one of the things they were, they were uh, particularly concerned with was the new playground, which the, has been very well used uh, uh, since it's been erected. But uh, one of the things they're concerned about is it doesn't have a fence around it, and all the dog walkers. Uh, all the dogs, obviously, uh, go into the playground, but also it's very close to the road and kids have a tendency to run directly from, from, the, from the playground, obviously, uh, when they see their friends or whatever. Um, and they were saying, couldn't they have a fence around to make it a bit more secure? Well, we'll take yeah. that away and have a I'm aware that there are some um, road safety measures um, coming on stream for New A Road at that at the junction there, so hopefully that will um, that will be positive. Um, but we can definitely look at the fence issue. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that the bit we all look forward to, uh, and it's a bit later start than we anticipated, but I think a lot of that's because we talked about Heron uh, Road and etc. <laughs> a bit a little bit earlier on. So um, community question time now. We've We've had a few questions, and rather than read them out and read the response, you can do the response if you wish. Is is Mr. Sills here? No. Okay. Well, we're going to have to. Do you want to give them? Yeah. Uh, very briefly, then, uh, Mr. Sills um, is a resident of Birmingham Avenue, West Kirby, where um, it have been um, <coughs> correspondence with the council over some time around the trees and those needing pollarding. Um, so um, it was basically when is action going to be taken? Um, and the highways asset manager has advised that that will happen between January and March next year. So we'll miss all of that for okay, Mr. Sills. Excellent. And Mr. Jeffrey Davis? No? Okay. Yeah. Where are we going? Um, this is another issue around trees needing attention. Um, Forms Drive opposite Lombardy Avenue. Um, and again, the highways asset manager um, will request that works are undertaken at this location by the end of October. Um, because he's aware of the issue and knows what needs to be done there, so hopefully that's <laughs> And Councillor Patrick gets a response to this one, well done. Well, uh, well done. <laughs> We've had a number of questions um, in advance um, with regard to the golf resort, and I think, um, I know um, people in the audience, um, just to say that I understand that Councillor Patrick and David Ball, who's the Council's Assistant Director for Environmental Services, who quite often attends this committee, many of you know, met with a number of community members to discuss issues regarding the golf resort. Um, David's offered to keep the people who attended that meeting informed of progress and to meet with them again once the Council has received the detail of the proposals from the developer. So we've got a number of questions, so I know people will be keen to, to ask. I don't know if... Okay. So... You, would you like to say anything about the community groups that you've been involved with? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, briefly, so we can allow for comments and questions. Um, but I, ha I met, and there are a number of people in the audience this evening that were part of that um, group that met with David Ball and I think it was Ray Squire um, to discuss the golf resort. I suspect everyone's broadly aware of the proposal. Um, but the upshot of this was I was very impressed with David and with Ray, who I think were um, completely open and transparent and honest about all of the uh, in answer all of the questions that were asked of them, um, and made that ongoing commitment to um, answer those questions. And once further information was available, to, to have further meetings. Um, my takeaway from the from the meeting. Um, was that there were a number of um, studies being sort of conducted at present and a report had to come back to the council. Um, we met approximately three weeks ago and they explained that it would be about six weeks until this report was prepared, um, at which point about two or three months of work needs to be done by officers before that's then presented back to the cabinet to see whether or not there, this continues. Um, I know David Armstrong's here as well who may you may have some more information on this in terms of the exact time scale on this on this fairly important report that we're expecting. Okay. All right. Th uh, thanks for that, um, <coughs> Matthew. And um, certainly, I think it's a good initiative to speak to community groups because, whilst I think we've known for some time that there's been work going on, but that sometimes that can seem as though nothing's happening, and yeah. a bit of a vacuum, and yeah. people start wondering what's going yeah. on. Can I so. Say a word? Can I you can in a moment. I, I will begin, but I wanted to get some questions because people have listened to 
I'll stop you yet because you've been very good, Jerry, uh, uh, for some time. So let's try and get some questions in. So we've got Phil Simpson. Yeah. You've got your question, Phil. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank Matthew for setting that uh, meeting up. It was a very good meeting, quite constructive. Um, my question on the golf resort, a little slightly two seconds of background. The, the preferred, preferred um, provider of this golf course got a very, very dodgy background. Mm -hmm. He um, tried to build a golf course, or he said he was going to build a golf course in Clinetley in South Wales. Um, when he went to start that, he went bust, and the land went to build houses on. And that's where it is today. It's, it's all a big housing estate. Um, so my question comes on to to do diligence regarding these people who, who are in the frame to build the golf resort. Bearing in mind that in Chinatown in Liverpool, where due diligence wasn't carried out properly, the senior officers on the council and some of the councillors are looking at prosecutions with possible prison sentences, which is what happens if you don't do the due diligence. So my question is this. What due diligence have been carried out on the proposed bidder stroke company, uh, and that's the Nicholas Joint Venture Group, as well as any other company involved uh, with the construction of the Hoylake Golf Resort? Given that it has to be passed by the planning committee, what assurances will council give that every person, company involved, will be subject to the highest due diligence to protect the Whittle taxpayer? Okay, and a uh, good question. Thank you. Unless you're going to do the due diligence, Matthew, I was going to ask David to try and answer. David can have the first time, I think. <laughs> so, David. Chair, I mean, I think, as you just said, there's no greater incentive to do the due diligence pro properly, but obviously, because actually you lose your job and you can be prosecuted. So, clearly, all the people involved in the council will do their very best to make sure that the due diligence is carried out. But when necessary, we will buy in external advice to supplement that as well. Clearly, the, the process is just like um, was described earlier. There's, the the timescale is as set out, and you can only start the due diligence really when you get the next uh, tranche of submissions from the developer, and that's what will happen. Okay. Um, Jerry, you wanted to say something? Yes, about thank you, Chair. Um, there's quite a few things to say about it. Uh, uh, probably this isn't the place to say it in any great detail, but a quick summary. As a Hoylake councillor, I am totally opposed to the idea of the golf resort. When it was first proposed to us eight years ago, uh, we were told the councillors were briefed and we were told that it wasn't going to cost the council, the taxpayer, anything at all. It's all going to be paid by the people who are going to do the job. Well, it's already cost 800,000 that we know of. And it's estimated that the other add-ons here and there is probably one million eight hundred thousand already, and it'll probably rise. So, firstly, we think it's a total waste of money, and as a oil councillor, I don't want it. Now, I was amazed to hear, by the way, that David Ball and Patrick held this meeting with people that were interested in it a few weeks ago. As a Hoyland councillor, none of us were invited to the meeting. We didn't know you had it. So, well, is that is that important? Should we not have been involved in it? Anyway, we didn't know anything about it until after the meeting. Being bypassed. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to it. Um, so, I was amazed that David Ball and his colleagues, David Ball, senior manager, just ignored the Hoyland councillor when he called this meeting or when he to this meeting. But people are interested. Did he think that we weren't interested in it? Well, he probably knew that I wasn't, that I was opposed to it. As Jeb Lebacca said, I was going to mention this, I only mentioned it briefly this morning, 